We all know about the Large Hadron Collider, which is used by CERN and made many discoveries, including the major discovery of the Higgs boson, um, in which there are accelerating particles, subatomic particles in these magnetic fields, slamming into each other, colliding, remarking on what happens. But what happens if a human being gets in the way? What would happen if you put your head in the Large Hadron Collider? It happened to one man. And thinking about the Large Hadron Collider, we have massive amounts of uh, radiation, proton radiation. And we have these subatomic particles being shot around in this miles long corridor um, at almost the speed of light. And it might not be incredibly discernible what is happening to the naked eye. Discernible. Get it? <laughs> uh, I did not intern intend that at all. That is my only contribution to this clip. Um, but something is definitely happening, something powerful, something crazy. And before scientists have been asked what would happen if a human being were to be caught in this beam? Um, and it's not really clear because no one wants to sacrifice their soft human flesh to potentially disastrous conclusions. Uh, Professor Michael Merrifield from the University of Nottingham said, that's a good question. I don't know is the answer. Probably be very bad for you. Uh, Professor Lawrence Eaves from the University of Nottingham said, by the scales of energy we notice, it wouldn't be that noticeable. Would I put my hand in the beam? I'm not sure about that. You should trust him, he's a scientist. Yeah, it's just like, what would happen though? Because I, we've seen, uh, you know, nuclear fallout, which is a lot of radiation, like in um, Hiroshima or uh, Chernobyl, and we we've seen the results of that. But what if it were to be super concentrated? Like one proton? No, not no, that not concentrated. Like one proton. Sorry, because <laughs> you you need at least two for them to collide. Oh, of uh, but course. The beam, so two protons. Uh, no, okay, I'll let you finish. Not that, but. <laughs> What if someone were to be in the way of a proton beam? This actually did happen in 1978. Soviet scientist Anatoly Bogursky uh, stuck his head in the particle accelerator. This was an accident. <laughs> he wasn't doing this on purpose just to be like, Ooh, what would happen? Um, but so often in the course of accidents, we learn something uh, about what could possibly happen. He was checking malfunctioning equipment in uh, the largest particle accelerator in the Soviet Union when a safety mechanism failed and a beam of protons traveling at nearly the speed of light passed straight through his head. And uh, by that time, that had never happened to another single person. And he was taken away to get medical treatment to see what would happen. So I mean, this was long in the days before epic fail videos online, but I think this would probably be one of them. You know, the Russian scientist sticks his head up into the collider to check oh, it out and uh, it's catastrophic an accident. accident that we can all learn from. So he said he immediately saw an intense flash of light, but felt no pain. Um, so he was taken to a clinic, doctors were worried about him. Uh, they were worried that the protons would wreak havoc and essentially cause major cell damage, cause the cells to no longer uh, divide, uh, break down chemical bonds in the DNA. And because this was radiation, what, did dozens and dozens of times more than the lethal dose? Yes, it was very once? powerful in a very concentrated area right in his head. So luckily right his head. organs may have been all right and he would still be able to produce uh, you know, white blood cells and have uh, his bone marrow cells continue to divide itself. So what happened to him was the beam shot right through his head and it deposited a huge amount of radiation energy. Um, weirdly, or maybe not weirdly or surprisingly. I think it's weirdly. Uh, he's still alive today. Yeah, that's crazy to me. <laughs> his <laughs> face is half paralyzed. Um, and he is reported to be deaf in one ear. He has suffered at least six generalized tonic clonic seizure, seizures. Grand mal uh, seizures. These are typically like the big seizures that you would see depicted on television. Not He's fun. also yeah. suffered from uh, smaller seizures, which are less visually dramatic. But he's never been diagnosed with cancer, which is surprising. But I think if you were to ask him today whether or not it's safe to stick your head in a particle no, accelerator, it's not. he would probably tell you no. No, it, his you face got it. paralyzed, he's deaf in one ear, and now he suffers some seizures. Don't put any part of your body in a particle accelerator if you are to get the rare opportunity to look at a particle accelerator. <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, it, I seriously expected it to be far worse. Yeah. I expected it to be lethal. 
and it wasn't, but it does cause damage, obviously. I think if you were to have a couple of people try those exact same circumstances, it would be lethal for some of them. Oh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, this is a sample size of one person. Yes. And we don't know the other aspects in his life that would lead to him living or perhaps not living in another circumstance. Um, it's an accident because no one is going to risk their lives in this way. No, it's not going to be positive. It's not going. To, you're not. You're not going to get like spider powers or any other kind of superhero abilities. You will probably um, suffer tremendously <laughs> over your, over the rest of your life. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Peter Parker didn't just have seizures all of his life and was deaf in one ear. Yeah, he, he made out pretty well in the deal. So like, it's a spectrum from good to dead. From I guess Spider Man to. <laughs> paralyzed face and seizures and deafness. Particle accelerators, not even once uh, for your flesh that is. We can still learn a lot from particle accelerators, but maybe don't put your body inside of one in any aspect. Um, what we have learned from this one person who did it by accident is that tragic things could occur, perhaps even worse, because as I said, the sample size was very small.